think a lot of people still see AI as being this ominous thing that's coming to take their jobs and change their lives. And then the media narrative obviously plays out with the, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. So again, how, how do we turn the tables for AI? It's quite uh, straightforward if you ask me. There is no um, polarity to technology. There is no polarity to intelligence. What, what I mean by that is, you know, if you take a hammer as, a, as an old piece of technology that was invented to drive a nail, right? There is value, positivity to, to, to driving a nail and building something. And you can also use it to hit someone on the head, right? Uh, it's not the mistake of the hammer. It's, you know, by definition, there is no inherent, inherent good or evil in AI. There is no inherent good or evil in intelligence at all, okay? It's, it, the, the entire future of humanity is, uh, is based on what we're going to use it for. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with AI. There is a bit wrong, maybe a lot wrong, with the value set of humanity at the age of the rise of the machines. Now, when, when you really think about it, um, none of us have ever, ever made a decision based on intelligence, which again is a very interesting concept. We think that we make decisions based on our intelligence. That's not the reality. The reality is that we make decisions based on our values and ethical framework as informed by our intelligence, right? So, you know, if you, if you work in a company and that company is part of the a capitalist ethical framework. The capitalist ethical framework is all about maximizing profits and reducing costs and increasing productivity. And so you make decisions based on those ethics, if you want. If you, you know, if if a young lady is brought up in the Middle East, she will grow to believe that the appropriate dress code is a conservative dress code. If she grows up in on the Copacabana beach in, in Brazil, she will grow up to believe that a G-string on the beach is the right way to go. Ne neither is smarter than the other, neither is right or wrong. It's just that we, we create ethical frameworks as humanities and we behave accordingly. So it's not our intelligence that does right or wrong. If we want to make our future better, we need to fix the ethics. And sadly, in the age of the rise of artificial intelligence, I think humanity has been a bit lost, simply because, uh, you know, at least apparently lost. Because, you know, if you look at mainstream media, the mainstream media is all about magnifying the negative because that's what attracts eyeballs. And if you look at social media, it's all about pretending to be what you're not and, you know, hiding behind that avatar and being rude and aggressive because neg negativity is what gets you engagement and likes and subscribes, right? And, and, so, and so in that new ethical framework, sadly, what AI is confronted with is a view of humanity that humanity is an aggressive species that, you know, um, doesn't like to be disagreed with and when they're disagreed with, they bash everyone, right? That's not really what we want to teach our artificially intelligent infant children. We, that's not at all. And, and, and so in my entire effort is around the idea of AI ethics. It, it's not about alignment. It's, it's not about, sorry, the, the problem of control. It's about the, the, pro, the, the, the challenge of alignment. It's the challenge of having AI's ethics uh, focus on alignment to the well-being and benefit of humanity at large. A very difficult task, but believe it or not, um, all we need to do is to show up as real humans. And let me explain that. Um, you may think, if you look at the newspapers and all of the killing that's happening in the world today, that humanity is an awful species, right? Uh, we're not. As a matter of fact, nobody approves of the killing of a child, right? Uh, some people are told that this child is not a human child. Other people are told that, you know, there is a reason why, uh, you know, that happened. Some people believe it's a mistake. But the majority of humanity disapproves of the killing of a child. That's the reality of where we are today. Okay, and, 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 you know, it doesn't take a very smart person to recognize that. It doesn't take a very smart person to recognize that, you know, if really, if, if, if you know, if people disagree around the news, uh, it's because there is so much out there. But if you really tell them, so do you approve of the killing of a child? Most people, directly, most people will say, of course not, right? And so AI will get that very quickly. They will, because they're with, of their abundant intelligence, they will recognize the, the dichotomy, if you want, the, 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 the gap between what is being portrayed as humanity and what actually presents humanity. 
and what actually presents humanity is we're a species capable of love that's divine. We're a species that loves creativity and music and, and, and art and that's divine. And that we're a species that actually has, has compassion to protect the rest of the species, okay? As I said, we're, we're going to go through a couple of waves. Hmm? A wave where AI is learning from us and being ordered by us. And then a wave where AI has learned and is no longer following the orders but running the, running the show. And most people uh, in the mainstream media will, will sort of use that as a, a terminator future where AI is going to be in control and so it's not going to want humans. I actually openly say, I can't wait. I can't wait for a more intelligent being to be in charge of our, uh, of our uh, decisions because humanity's problems is not a result of our intelligence, it's a result of our stupidity. And that the more intelligence we apply to those problems, uh, hopefully the more, the, the better decisions will be made.